Sea levels are rising. Saltwater intrusion into South Florida's drinking water, septic tanks, landscape, and agriculture is inevitable. In his socially charged plant project, Cortada embarked on a public campaign to urge every resident across Miami-Dade County to plant a saltwater-tolerant mangrove propagule and an elevation-marked flag in their yard to symbolize and start preparing for a future with sea level rise. His mangrove in every yard reforestation effort focused on raising awareness and building community. Residents were encouraged to plant mangrove seedlings in their yards to facilitate climate conversations, help sequester carbon dioxide, and grow the salt-tolerant native tree canopy. Plant is a participatory art project where I'm asking individuals to address sea level rise by focusing on what's to come. I try to make the invisible visible by planting trees that normally grow at the water's edge and instead plant them in your home. Planting trees that are salt tolerant like a mangrove in a place where freshwater plants grow today is my way of sending a warning sign to the person who sees that tree grow from a small little sapling into a tree. So by planting this small tree, this little gesture of planting a tree in your yard, what I'm trying to do is motivate you to reframe the way you think and to be a catalyst in the problem solving. I'm also trying to get your neighbor to take notice. So I ask you to take a white flag and on the white flag, write the elevation of your property. There's an app, eyesontherise.org. You type in your address and it tells you the elevation of your property. Putting that white flag next to your mangrove allows your neighbor to ask you, what is that mangrove doing there? And begin conversation about how you're both in the same, at the same ground, at the same level, and both impacted by the same climate future. Plant is a project that we are bringing to schools all across the community, 25 schools so that they can create their own vertical installations. The University of Miami students will give lectures across 50 libraries to try to inspire people in those libraries to take mangroves to every corner of Miami-Dade County. It's a project that we're doing at Pinecrest Gardens during the farmer's market so people can just walk in, engage with our university students, and learn a little bit about saltwater intrusion, global climate change, sea level rise, and what we as a society can begin doing now proactively to plan for a future at the same time that we plant the canopy of future land. The mangrove finds itself as the central aspect of many of artist Xavier Cortada's socially engaged art projects. Mangroves are salt-tolerant plants that eventually grow into large trees, most often found along coastlines. The impact of mangrove trees in coastal areas cannot be understated, as mangroves actively stabilize coastlines by reducing erosion and combat sea level rise by allowing for a buildup of sediment in the water. They also serve as an integral part of coastal ecosystems, the trees themselves providing shelter for a variety of marine and avian life. After witnessing the removal of mangrove forests within his community, Cortada set out to reclaim urban environments for nature through the planting and exhibition of mangroves throughout Miami. The focus of mangroves in Cortada's work can initially be seen in projects like Miami Mangrove Forest, a large-scale public art project from 2004 that saw the artists and volunteers paint mangrove propagules along the underbelly of Miami's I-95 interstate in an effort to create a conceptual reforestation of the urban area. This eventually led to a literal reforestation of the urban Miami area in the Reclamation Project, initiated in 2006. The Reclamation Project was an attempt at reintroducing nature into the built environment to acknowledge the precarious nature of such a meeting. Plant builds upon this by looking toward the future, the importance of utilizing salt-tolerant mangroves in the fight against climate change being paramount. All of these projects, as well as Cortada's Underwater HOA initiative, are a part of an overarching concept of protecting Florida's various coastlines. While all of these projects, Underwater HOA, Plant, and the Reclamation Project, are working in some capacity to address environmental issues, their functionality and scope differ from one another. However, these projects each work as an evolution of their predecessor, all working in cohesion to address similar issues facing South Florida. This began with the Reclamation Project, a literal reclamation of coastal wetlands by the reforestation of mangroves in an attempt to protect the coast against future storm surges and create a natural habitat for a variety of marine life. Underwater HOA builds upon these environmental issues and addresses them through a visualization of the invisible by allowing homeowners the opportunity to learn their home's elevation above sea level. Through the creation and implementation of an actual homeowners association, Cortada asks his participants to work together within their community to spur action toward change. 
As governments around the world continue to ignore the climate crisis, the importance of looking toward the future becomes increasingly obvious. This is the main inspiration of PLANT, the goal of which is planning and planting for a future devastated by climate change. PLANT is very much an acknowledgement of a changing coastline, one that is moving progressively inland as time passes. As this happens, the natural freshwater aquifers across Florida will grow salinated to the point of disaster for many local ecosystems. In a future mutated by climate change, sea level rise, and saltwater intrusion, salt-tolerant plants will be the only type to survive in South Florida. In PLANT, residents are asked to plant a mangrove propagule in their front yard alongside a white flag with their current elevation above sea level written across it. The tree functions both as a literal act against climate change, specifically sea level rise as the planting of mangroves promotes increased carbon sequestration, as well as a visualization of the growing problem. As the tree is nurtured and grows, so does the vulnerability of the area it resides in, the beauty of the tree juxtaposed with what its growth represents. The mangrove lends itself as a subversive quality in this project, as once the mangrove is planted, it is illegal under Florida law to remove it, an allusion to the permanence of the issue at hand. In both PLANT as well as the Reclamation Project, public exhibitions occurred with the installation of mangroves in a geometric grid upon the windows of community spaces such as schools and libraries. As noted art historian Rosalind Krauss states, the grid functions to declare the modernity of modern art. Flattened, geometricized, ordered, it is anti-natural, unreal. It is what art looks like when it turns its back on nature. The implementation and function of the grid offers a strong contrast from the natural qualities of the mangroves, effectively allowing for the mangroves to be placed in an aesthetic context of art. Beyond just a contextualization of the project as artistic expression, the functionality of the grid references urban planning and non-natural environments, the inclusion of the mangroves effectively behaving as a reclamation of the built by the natural environment. These exhibitions are very temporal in function, coextensive with their intention, the mangroves being living plants and thus require human attention to survive. The longevity of such an installation depends entirely on the ability to welcome nature into an urban habitat. The development and undertaking of such a large-scale project requires no small amount of community outreach and involvement. Plant success was contingent on Cortada's ability to effectively communicate his ideas to the public in a way that not only raised awareness but promoted community engagement. To this end, Cortada used the plant installations to encourage local conversations on sea level rise and saltwater intrusion at almost every public library branch in Miami-Dade County. Forty-five libraries displayed project information, mangrove seedling exhibits, and hosted student guest speakers as part of the public awareness and education campaign. Through these interventions, not only did awareness of and involvement in the project rise, a new model for spurring climate action was presented for others to learn from.